That is someone's son, a loved one that we are holding down. I always wonder. At some point, this was meant to be fun. It doesn't look like a lot of fun, being paranoid, convinced that you're being chased by Godzilla, so terrified that you're throwing yourself in the back of a paddy wagon. We have to drag him out of the car, and we can barely get him through the front door before we have to sedate him. He is one of many who will come in that shift, psychotic under the influence of drugs. The hallucinations are real. The sensation of insects crawling up the skin, the need to remove clothing, run around naked in traffic, avoiding imagined crocodiles. He is one of many who will come in, biting, kicking, punching, as staff trying desperately to look after him. This is my reality as an emergency doctor in an inner-city hospital. I often get asked by young doctors, "How do you deal with this?" We have excellent training and security, but staff still do get hurt, not just physically, but psychologically, from the constant onslaught of violence. Thankfully, it is only 10% of my workload. I've always seen it as a privilege working with people at their most vulnerable. And I work with an amazing team of people who pull together in very challenging circumstances. This is still seven and a half thousand patients who will present in one year to my emergency department. Methamphetamines is still by far the drug of choice, with two thirds of them needing some form of sedation. What this drug has done. Is to drive levels of violence not seen before in emergency departments all around the country. This image will be repeated three and a half thousand times this year in just one emergency department. Once sedated, he will have one nurse looking after him for the next 11 hours, taking out that cubicle for us to see any other patients. It is interesting. That we treat patients who come in with illicit drug poisonings quite differently to pharmaceuticals. If you came with a paracetamol overdose, there would be no question about me doing a blood level that will help guide and refine treatment. That is not the case with illicit drugs. If you came in sick after having taken some party drugs, I would have no idea what it is that you've taken. I would simply treat your symptoms. So, if you came in agitated, I'll put you to sleep. If you came in sleepy, I'd wait for you to wake up. Currently, our knowledge of what illicit drugs are causing harm in the community are based on very crude measures like sewage water testing. Let me introduce you to my very nerdy world of toxicology. And I hope it will give you some understanding of why it is that patients come in with such similar symptoms. Let me introduce you to the phenethylamine group. You will find this base structure in adrenaline. Let me tell you, as I'm standing here on this red TEDx dot, my levels of adrenaline are sky high. <laughs> my heart is racing. My pupils are big. My blood pressure is high. My muscles are tense, but it feels good. You will also find this base structure in methamphetamines, in ecstasy, in N-bomb, a synthetic LSD. The similarities in the chemical structures gives the same euphoric feeling as one gets when you're standing on this red TEDx dot. However, there is such a thing as too much of a good thing. As these drugs are that much more potent, my levels of adrenaline are likely to rise to very dangerous levels. When that happens, I'm likely to have a fit. My muscles will go into overdrive, causing uncontrolled high body temperatures, causing heart attacks, and brain bleeds. 
We've been running this project at Royal Perth Hospital for the last few years, where for the first time, we're actually working out what illicit drugs are causing harm in our community. Working with the chemistry center, we have developed a standardized way of measuring, storing, and analyzing blood. The knowledge that we have gained from this has really opened many doors. So what we have found out is that methamphetamines is still the favorite drug in Perth. Most commonly, patients come in with psychosis. We had initially thought that the psychosis must be related to very high meth levels. What we actually found was, in fact, that their meth levels were minuscule. Only half of that of what you get at routine roadside testing. Now, we then had to have a think. If the psychosis is not due to high meth levels, what else could it be due to? What we did learn is that the majority of patients do get better after a good sleep, with only 2% of patients having ongoing psychotic symptoms. We then had to rehypothesize as to whether or not it may actually be the pattern of use or maybe sleep deprivation that was causing their psychosis. It is now the summer of 2016. A young man is brought in, unwell, after taking what he thought was off ecstasy. He comes in agitated, hot, with an uncontrolled high body temperature. Left untreated, he would have died, because the uncontrolled high body temperature causes a breakdown in protein in the body. Not dissimilar to the changes that you see when you fry an egg when you see the clear of the egg change to white. But in the body, it causes organ failure. Treated early, the process can be halted, and patients do make a full recovery. He was one of 16 patients that summer who presented to our emergency department, all thinking that they had taken ecstasy. What we found out was, in fact, they had taken a drug which was a combination of a synthetic LSD, N-bomb, and 5-fluoroamphetamines. This combination of two novel psychoactive drugs had not been seen before in the market, and it was very, very dangerous. This cluster of bad ecstasy served as an early warning system, because we could actually find out what the drug was and immediately put out a public health message warning users out there about what was out there. It also became clear that the problem was bigger than just one hospital. In that same summer, there was a death in WA, one in Queensland, and seven in Victoria. The knowledge and lessons learned from this one project has now been expanded nationally to form the Emerging Drugs Network of Australia. This is a collaboration between emergency departments, forensic laboratories, and the National Poisons Network. The aim of which is to start a national register that will serve the basis for surveillance as well as an early warning system. Just imagine this. There is a cluster of poisonings in your local neighborhood. The paramedics go out and pick up the patients. They would inform the, the poisons network who would then coordinate blood sampling to work out what drugs are causing harm. What we do with that information is just as important because we need to get to the user groups. Using well-established networks as well as being creative to reach the episodic users. Illicit drug use is a complex problem. And the motivation behind its use is a whole different talk. This simplistic message of simply saying no is not working and doing a disservice to our young people. And I'm fully aware that we are just a single cog in a very complex wheel. We are, however, moving away from Band-Aid treatment to actually working out what illicit drugs are causing our sons and daughters to be sick. 
My challenge to you is this. Are we willing to be objective about what measures work? It will be uncomfortable. It will challenge long-held beliefs and values. I cannot change the choices that people make in their lives. I can, however, try and minimize some of the fallout from that. The exciting thing is that this starts here in Perth. Thank you.